Now, we used to only sell clothing and books for the most part, but we make so much more money and sell so many more items of these sorts of things than we ever did with clothing and books. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about what makes us the most money. Where do we get all of our profits from these days? Now, we used to sell clothing. I had shelf after shelf after shelf of clothing, clothing all over the place. Same thing with books. We used to scan books. We realized, though, after doing that for a while, that it's a rat race and there's a lot of drawbacks for selling those. We've since moved over to areas that make us far more money, have no slowdown periods, have almost no returns, and sell all of the time for us for an incredible amount of profit. And we're going to take a look at some of those types of items that make us an immense amount of money. So why do I sell what I sell? Most of what we sell are niches, at least in this store here. Niches make us a ton of money. They're things that many people may not assume carries any kind of real decent value. Maybe a piece of cutout paper like this that's been printed on with a very lovely image. This is 1880s, 1890s probably, without a doubt. It's a larger piece. Between this one and its twin, basically, these were actually together in one sheet. I separated them apart and sold them individually for basically 80 bucks for the pair. I have almost nothing into these. These are bought in a big purchase from a scrapbooker. The scrapbooker apparently bought large quantities of these sorts of things, had no clue what's old or not because they weren't buying it for the age or any of that. They were buying it to use as a scrapbooker. Now here's a grouping of vintage dolls. Now these would be for like doll houses from the 50s and 60s. It's a mixed lot. The father on the far left and the little girl on the far right probably are from the same set. The other two in the middle could be from the same set. It's kind of hard to tell. Either way, these are something I paid pennies for. We got $43 and some change, if I remember right, on these, plus postage. So again, I've got nothing into them. It doesn't look like much. To the average person, you might miss that these are from a dollhouse. These are, again, a small vintage niche in toys in general. So 50 cents or so into this, over 40 bucks back. Now here's a tin flag from a Mark's play set. One way to tell some of these are the number of stars on there, but I usually just list them this way regardless. I don't usually put the number of stars because if someone's only looking for a certain type of flag, they will ignore this one. They may just want a filler, so this is fine for many different people. If you're a Mark's person or so, you probably know exactly what this is from. Uh, we had a bunch of these at one time. I probably sold a dozen or more of different types of tin flags. This would have went with the little tiny Mark's army men, the soldiers, the same series and everything else like that. Easy, quick. This is one of those types of purchases I get for a quarter. This is a niche, a vintage toy niche. A Mark's guy, gal, is going to love these sorts of things. Now, this is actually a label off of a piece of fabric. It was stitched on. You can see some minor damage up at the top. That's from where the stitching held this onto a piece of fabric. Uh, it's a pattern. It's a color. They bought three yards of it. I sold this for $13.50. I literally have nothing into this. It was with a whole bunch of other junk. It was basically a discard pile from another craft booker as well, scrapbook person as well. So this is one of those things that most people don't think about. I got like a penny or two into it. I bought a whole bunch of just junky looking stuff like this. It's damaged. It has issues with it. Now here's a record. Now this is an LP. This is a 12 inch. Many people say, well, if it doesn't have a cover, a sleeve or anything else like that, it's not going to be worth anything. That's really not true at all. This is a, a promotional disc advertising Don Heminger Quartet. It's a jazz group. It doesn't say the songs or anything else like that. It's just like a group shot. It's a private press as well. Um, that means that it wasn't made by a main record company. It was made by somebody smaller. This never came with a cover, even though it's a 12-inch LP, basically. We sold it for almost 45 bucks plus shipping. I paid a quarter for it at one of those junk sales. No one assumed it was worth anything. I think everybody who looked at it assumed that since it doesn't have a cover, it's not going to be worth anything. This is one of those small niche areas in private press, especially with jazz. 
Now, poster-wise, I do a lot in posters. We bought a huge stack. I've been listing a few of these each and every week. We've been selling a few of these each and every week. This is a group called Purity Ring. Another Eternity is the LP name. I don't know much about the group. I usually just pop them up. Most of these, I don't look up all the individual ones, depending on the age or when it came from. A lot of these record store promos all fall in the same ballpark range, so it's easy. It's a small niche. Either way, these always sell. I have maybe a nickel in these. We bought pounds of posters. I bought them by the pound. I didn't buy them per poster. I bought them in massive bulk quantities. Pretty much filled up the back of one of our vehicles with these. So a couple cents, a nickel maybe into them. Now, tiles and ceramics. I don't mess a lot with ceramics in general, but this is a Motavi tile. That's the maker of it. It's well marked in the back. And this is a like a promotional one that you would, I, I guess, donate and you would get one of these tiles. It's older. It's not a new one in any way, shape, or form. It has a unique design on it. I paid like 50 cents or something for it. It's not very big. It's a nice piece, though. It doesn't have any real issues with it. It's a well-known company. I think we got 42 or 4250 out of this one here. I have nothing into it. It was one of those pieces that everybody passed by. People had it ID'd as a paperweight. It's not a paperweight. It's, I think, from in the local areas as well around here, too. So, Anyway, it's an interesting, unique item. Now, menus. I showed the twin to this one here. I had two of these. The other one sold, I want to say, for 80 or something like that. It's in another video. This one I got roughly 70 bucks shipped out the door. Now, I have less than a dollar into this. It's nothing super or spectacular. This is the Plaza Hotel. I believe this is from the one in New York. It's from 1913. It's a one single piece of cardstock. Uh, nothing on the back. This is what would have been set on the table. Sometimes it would have been in a room has some little minor issues. It's not in mint condition, but it's still in decent condition. Again, I got nothing into this. So between two of these, sale price, we got over 150 bucks, and, you know, it's nothing into it. So it's 100 and say, I don't know, $15, $20 profit off just a piece of paper because I spent a little more time looking at it and realized it's a good early menu. Uh, labels. I buy labels for anything. Sports labels. I'm not a sports person, but I'll buy sports labels. This is a uh, roller skating label, uh, luggage labels, shipping labels, address labels. Any of that sort of thing is sellable. This one here went for almost $24 uh, plus shipping on it. I sell a couple of these every single week of my life. Sometimes I sell maybe a dozen or two in the same week. I've had people buy 20 or so of these all at the same time. On average, these have been going for at least 20 bucks. These are one of those items I never look up the price. They all go up for the exact same price. $34.50 for every one of these. I love these sorts of things. Most of the labels that I sell, the majority of them, I can just pop them up for a specific price. I know which ones are worth more, so at least I don't have to look up the majority of these. Now, sheet music. I, I sell sheet music fairly often. We sold quite a few this week. This is one I paid maybe a quarter for. It's been up for a little while. There's no graphics on it. Most people don't take a shot on these uh, plain, basic-looking ones. It doesn't look like much. We got over 20 bucks for it, plus they paid for shipping as well. Easy. Nothing to it. Two photos and off you go. Now, here's some prints. I love vintage art. This is from 1976. It's a portfolio. Um, this is one of those ones eBay lost the images quite some time ago, and I guess we never went back in, but it's still sold full price. The person who bought it was extremely happy as well. It's patriotic. It's hunting. Uh, it's, it's by Remington. So the, the key on this one is a Remington piece. I know anything related to a, a firearms like Remington, Springfield, or anything else like that, I always sell. I don't care if it takes a little while. I paid a dollar for this at a junk sale. So either way you go, I'm getting over 20 bucks back plus you know shipping on it. So easy, easy. Now this is a counter stand. This would have been on someone's counter advertising it. Uh, D. McCarthy and Company in Syracuse. I don't know what they sold. It doesn't even say. There would have been a place on the back for like an easel. It had an easel back. This one did sell for $64.50. Straight on off. Very happy with it. Um, maybe I got a dollar into it at best. The people I bought this piece from and several other ones had no clue. It's their family's last name. They weren't sure where their relationship was or anything else like that. It was dirt cheap. It was just some owl cardboard piece to them. It's not a holiday piece. It doesn't advertise anything other than uh, a business without any idea on what that business did. So it's an interesting piece. 
This is the sort of thing that makes us a ton of profit that most people just, eh, it's not worth anything. That's what they think. Most people think this stuff is junk. Now here's a Montgomery Ward small supplement. It's a midsummer sale. It, I believe it was only ran through August, if I remember right, looking through it. Now, it's not in great condition. What it's got going for it is it's from 1919. The back's even torn up. It's got some major damage, some paged issues. The majority of it's there, though. It's got some really nice ads, some things that you just won't see with prices and the whole works. I mean, it's Montgomery Ward. Uh, most of their stuff sells extremely well. Now, if this is one of their big, big catalogs, it could have been worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's stuff like this, this separator and things like that, these machinery items that sell these sorts of things. Now, this is very specific. It's got stoves and the whole works in it. So it's really an interesting piece of history in my book. You can see the prices and what things went for. You can see styles. Some of them, believe it or not, are very similar to what we still make today, like some of the men's boots and shoes and things like that, too. So rather interesting. We took 20 some odd dollars plus shipping, which I'm very happy with. Now, this was a dollar purchase, purchased with a whole bunch of older magazines and a few catalogs like this. Now, business cards I've talked about so many times. I do phenomenally well with business cards. This is a person that, that deals in uh, Arizona cactus wear. Uh, made from the cacti of Arizona in Mexico. Really interesting. Uh, something you won't see. It's blank on the back. It's literally just a business card. This has been up for a little while. We took 65 plus shipping, which I'm very happy with. If you know my 3X pricing structure, that's well within range of a pretty decent profit all the way around. This is one of those quarter 50 cent purchases. I throw a bunch of this stuff together at estate sales, auctions. I can buy big trays full of junk like this. And most people just look at it, don't see much of a value. They're not sure how to age it. They miss the fact that it says World's Fair exhibit. And then even if they did, they wouldn't know where. They'd have to really dig into it to figure out which one it would even be. So I know enough to look this up and how to figure it out. Hence, I was able to sell it for 65 bucks. Now, here's another business card. This one is fully engraved, though. This is a really nice one here. It's for liquors and cigars, and it advertises uh, liquor on the back. It's got an award this company won in 1878, so it was made after 1878. It's a New York company, excellent condition. This one I took almost 70 with shipping. I think it was $74 and some change. This one just, again, takes the right person to see it. That's all it takes to sell these. I don't promote them. I don't do any of that stuff at all. Now, I used to be a book scanner. We did book scanning, and I sold clothing. We had bins and bins and shelves of clothing. This blows all of that out of the water every single day. When clothing dies or it's slow in the summer for clothing and books, these always sell still. These are our stuff that people have to have extra money for in the first place. So a recession doesn't hurt them. Uh, people are still buying these. Even when half the country was laid off, this stuff was still selling for us right up at top dollar, right across the board. Very happy with these sort of things. Now, poster stamps, stickers, and labels. That's what this basically is. It's an advertising. This is a quack medicine piece here. We got right at 30 bucks plus shipping. This person's been buying from us probably for four years. They bought three other items. They paid almost 90 some odd dollars for their purchase. It was just four little tiny pieces of paper, basically. Now, this one was up for a little while. It's another label for Bon Am. It's a cleanser. Uh, it's two actual labels. So one would have went on the bottom part of the container and one would have went up by the top by the neck of it. This is basically the entire thing that would have been on this. Yeah, and you can see the color of the background. So this one's definitely been up for a little while. We took $14 and some change, plus they paid for shipping. I, I have nothing into this. This is one of those things you just throw and put together in a big lot in a state sale or at a local live auction. Sometimes at the flea market, I can buy trays of just ripped up and junk paper. And that's where I find a lot of this stuff at. Now, this is a tally card, a bridge tally card. On the back, you would see like a table number and they can write down the hands and scores and things like that on the back of these. Now, these are two famous people. That's Betty Grable and Don Amici. Now, I had the entire set of these and I've been selling them one at a time. We've been doing sales similar as well. And we usually sell one every month or so on these. I got almost 30 bucks for this, plus they paid for shipping. When one sells, I list another one up. That's all I do with these, so that way it just looks like there's only one available at any given time on eBay. So the sense of urgency is better that way. Now, old tins I love. This is one of those quarter purchase. This is T-balls. Now, I'm not really even sure what that is. 
Maybe it was like a, a, a breath mint or something. I don't really know. A lozenge. This one sold for 25 bucks. Uh, I included shipping at that price. I have a quarter into it. These are one of those you go to a garage sale, a thrift store, flea market, or something, and they've got bins and bins of old tins. I rummage through every single tin bin that I see. If there's a bunch of tins somewhere, I'm looking at them. I've sold them for coffee. I've sold them for typewriter ribbons. I've sold them for, geez, you name it. I've even had tins for vacuum tubes. All of those sorts of things go extremely well. This is a smaller one. It's not super, super large. Uh, probably about four times the size of like an Altoids mint tin or something like that. Now, one area that I personally love are buttons, buttons of any kind. I just love buttons, old buttons, ladies' buttons, clothing buttons. This button right here is from overalls from probably about 1890s through about 1920. Sweet Ore is the brand name. I sold several of these. Now, for those in Patreon, you know what I call these. We've talked about I've done videos just on these. It did go for the full price of $22.50. Now, this is just a common button from overalls. They were on jeans as well. They weren't meant to, you know, be collected. They made some neat graphics on them, of course, as you can see. They're actually fighting, doing a tug of war over a pair of sweet or jeans. Maybe they are overalls. It's hard to tell. But this is one of those things I buy on a card for maybe the whole card I might get for two bucks. I might get 20, 30 buttons. One of those I got 22.50. Again, I sold two sweet or buttons to the same person, both for 22.50 a piece. I got pennies into them. If you know a little bit about them, you go to antique malls, flea markets, auctions, estate sales for sure, even church sales. You can find stuff like this and tins of old buttons from uh, an estate or something like that. They show up at all the places I just mentioned. They're cheap usually. Most people won't hold much value in something like this. Now, value-wise, here's some value in this one here. This is Napa Valley Route. This is a railroad button from San Francisco. Most of the California buttons that I get sell for some pretty darn good money. I got 75 bucks out of this one. They bought two other ones for 75 bucks, all from California. Paid for them all already. They're already in the mail. Uh, I combined shipping. This niche here is probably one of my favorites. On average, we sell probably around $2,400 on average in buttons every single month and have for almost a year and a half since we we purchased some massive bulk. Now we purchased roughly like $14,000 worth of buttons and I paid for them in like two months. So the money is here. This is one of my favorite niches because most people haven't a clue. They don't know what to look them up. Even the books to ID these are hard to come by. So unless you want to really dig in, you're going to just pass these up. And that's why I can make this type of money. Once you get known in a niche, it's the best way to make even more money because people will come to you first. Now, this one, unfortunately, is upside down. It's actually Sacramento North. So S should have been on the side. It doesn't matter. The person knew exactly what it was. 75 bucks as well. Now, the last one I showed you and this one, I have many of them. When one sells, I just change the quantity back to one again. I have zero quantity on all my listings, so I can do just that. 75 bucks on this one also. Now, here's Peninsular Railway, Santa Clara and San Jose. That's where this traveled between. I have eight of these in stock still right this minute. Again, I sold one for 75 bucks. And as I said, I have nothing, literally nothing into these other than the fees I have to pay eBay, the final value fees. So over $200 take-home profit from three single shirt buttons. That's it. I love the niches the best because I can always make great money on them. Again, it's, it's almost recession-proof across the board. There are always collectors for these sorts of things. And all, as I said before, it takes is the right person to see them. And one more final item here, another button. This is from John Marshall High School. It's a cadet button from a high school in Richmond, Virginia. It's a smaller place, not a huge place. It's an earlier one, circa 1915. I put it on sale. It sold for $43.50, plus they paid for shipping. Now, I do have more of these as well. The best types of items I sell are always the niches. I do fine with wholesale. I do fine with uh, NOS. I do fine with even some households and things like that. But I would always rather sell this because it's pretty much, again, sells all year round. There's not a big drop of any kind. There's always people out there that want these. May just take a little while to sell. Again, it's all passive income. The minute it's up, I'm done with it. All I got to do is sit there and wait for it to sell. Wait for that person to come on and say, hey, I want that. 
Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. and lights. Mmm, think someday I'll really be eating Jiffy Pop in outer space? I wouldn't go back there without it. Look for Jiffy Pop's special Goonies glowing cap offer. See package for details.